Today's Semi Soapbox is going to be talking about aftermarket audio and, and automobiles and one very important problem that I've noticed that apparently nobody seems to have ever addressed besides myself, strangely enough. So, first, I am an audiophile. I love good quality audio. I've I'm not going to say I've spent a lot of money on audio. That stuff is very expensive, and it's it's a hobby that I cannot currently uh, afford. I enjoy my high-quality audio. If I ever have the chance, I'm going to power my home audio system with a Boulder amplifier that they're meant for amphitheaters, and they're $100,000, $200,000 for one amplifier, but they're amazing, and they're gorgeous. Whenever I put a stereo in one of my cars, which I haven't had in a while because I've had other projects going on, priorities, right? So, but whenever I do, I don't just put a sub attached to the factory stereo. It's a new receiver, uh, all new speaker wires, uh, all channels are driven out of amplifiers, not out of the receiver. The very important bit, I always run two separate remote systems. One remote system powers just about everything. If I have multiple amps for the mids and highs, say I have an amp just for, for tweeters, and then I have an amp just for the, the coaxials or the, uh, the, the mids woofers, those will all be on the same remote system, the same wire. You bring the remote wire out and you split it to whatever you need. When I install the low frequency amplifier system, that is always its own separate remote. The remote comes out of the receiver, goes to a switch on the dash, and then out to the amplifier for the subs. This is because low frequency energy travels much further, has a far greater wavelength than the higher frequency stuff. So you can have your stereo on volume two, whatever that is for your receiver, you can have it turned down real low so you can just barely hear it but you're driving through a neighborhood middle of the night it's it's zero two hundred hours zero four hundred hours people aren't really waking up yet and you're rattling all the dishes in their cabinets and you're waking people up and it's quite annoying right and i used to be that guy i'd always turn it down when i go through neighborhoods right but i still want to listen to the music so it's still on and i never really realized originally how far that energy will travel, especially when it's interacting with the air inside of a house with a large flat wall. If a house has a large flat wall on any uh, exterior wall, that is now a speaker. And all of the air on the other side of that wall is moving in correlation to whatever your sub is doing, right? So it, it effectively echoes inside houses. You could stand outside your vehicle and you don't hear it, but the guy in the house right down the street, he will hear it. Right? So the, the bass and especially the sub bass, the subsonic frequencies, travel quite far before they lose energy and are inaudible. So what I started doing quite early on, it's, it's I was 20, 21, um, because people were complaining. They tell me, hey, man, I can hear your stereo. I'm like, I have it down on like nothing. And they're like, I don't know. I can still hear your subs. It's like, okay, what can we do to solve this? Easy. Just turn the sub off. You can turn the sub off and then you can turn the rest of the music back up again. If you, if your, if your, uh, midswolfers don't go down into the, uh, sub 200 range. 200 hertz range you should be fine you should be able to turn it up and listen to it normal without waking everybody else up in the neighborhood because some people work night shifts some people are coming home when everybody's still asleep some people are just out for the night maybe they don't work wednesday and they're like huh i'm gonna go on a drive or i'm gonna go down to the convenience store at 0200 and get me a drink and they want to listen to their music i get it right we all love music. Music is great. Music is fantastic. All these people that come up with this stuff, they're geniuses. They're brilliant. I love them. Mwah. But I don't want to listen to your music. I want to listen to my music. And I don't want to listen to any music, generally, when I'm trying to sleep. And many 
perhaps most people, don't want to listen to your music and only part of your music when they're trying to sleep. So, simple solution, yes, it takes a little bit more wire. It's an extra 15, 20 minutes in install time. A really good way to go about this also is don't always buy the car with the highest package. Buy the car that's one package further down, and what you end up getting in most vehicles is switch blanks. Okay? You pull the switch blank out, and you can have you can either have somebody design and print a switch housing to go in that blank that you can put a toggle switch, you can put a rocker switch, you can put one of those guys with the big uh, the, the, the big missile switches like you see in Hollywood where you flick up the door and then you flick the switch on and oh yeah, now I got subs. And then you flick the door down and it turns it off. Easy peasy. Unless your car is uh, like SPL competition car and you only ever run it at competition, if you're installing a sub of any size to add any warmth to the bottom of your, your, your audio spectrum, put a separate switch in for the sub. You don't want to have to go chasing through menus. You don't want to have to take 20 minutes because if you have to go through menus and it takes 10 minutes to turn the thing off, you're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to interact with stuff. I'm not going to turn that off. I'll just leave it running. And I'll either turn it down or off the whole, the whole system. But if you install the switch, you can still have your music. You can still enjoy it. And if you have a quality system for all the rest of your components, you'll barely even notice the difference. The only difference you'll have is you won't have the punch in the chest, right? You won't have the seat springs vibrating and the roof coming off your car. I very highly suggest, and I demand, darn kids, you know who you are? I demand, you darn kids, install switches in your cars. And that's all we've got for this video. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks.